Hello, this is Eric with Data Store. Thank you for joining the third Quick Start video in the series. Uh, we've finished installing the software, installing the tape drive, and so we're ready to configure the software to back up to disk. So we're really going to, in practice, focus on the last item on the slide three items to configure in the software today. We're going to add a store, enter the backup uh, service account and password that is used to run the protection plans that you configure, and then create a protection plan and run it to generate an archive in the store. So we'll get to that, but first we do want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the disk storage that you'll need for your backups, and then uh, define some terms as we use it in our software. Uh, to focus on the disk storage first, you will need disk storage to land the backups on disk, and you'll also need some disk for vaulting, which uses a disk cache. So you need to identify your disk storage. That is, it could be SAN storage, iSCSI attached, direct attached, internal disk, JBOD, eSATA, RDX, USB device, or a Server 2012 R2 storage pool, for example. Um, and we do have a knowledge base article that I would encourage you to review on disk storage considerations. And I'll make this link uh, on this slide active so you can just click on it to go to that article. So next let's talk about defining terms in relationship to each other. The first term is a store. The store is the location on disk where the backup is stored. The protection plan is the set of parameters that the backup engine uses to back up the data. So it will include the folders to back up, uh, which store you want the plan to target, the name of the archive uh, that you're creating. Next, the archive is the result of running the protection plan, and it appears in the store under the archives folder and takes the name of the plan. And then all of this takes place uh, prior to vaulting. A vault is one or more restore points selected for writing to tape in their deduplicated format for longer term retention. Build 9 of the software has a new feature that allows you to define a default account to use to run protection plans and store tasks. So I'm going to go out of order and actually get this administrative task out of the way first. So I'm going to go ahead and use a service account here. I've already defined it in Active Directory Users and Computers and made it a member of the Domain Administrators group as well as the Backup Operators group. Then I'll click OK. We're going to expand the storage node. Click on All Stores and then Add a Store. We're going to choose the Disk Drive option and then choose a volume we have for storage. This would not be the same volume as the production data. I'll just use the default name and we'll click prepare now. After preparing the storage we can see its location on disk and we can also see it in archive manager under the all stores node. Now we're going to create a local protection plan by selecting local plans in the left pane and create protection plan in the right pane. We have an advanced feature pack license installed which gives us support for a computer system type plan which can be used for bare metal recovery. 
It also gives us support for Exchange and SQL, and these plan types would be active if Exchange or SQL Server were in, uh, detected on the server we've installed on. So we're going to add one or more files or folders for backup. We're going to choose which store to target. We can have more than one store on a volume, or we can have multiple stores on multiple volumes. Then we're going to schedule the plan to run regularly. And we can run the plan with the service account we set up. Now we see our protection plan in the center pane when we have local plans selected in the left pane and then protection plans running uh, selected in the right pane. We can manually run the plan now to generate our first restore point. 